my name is Fidelia Shell Anthony from 12 Science B. I've chosen to present a book review that I've done on The Land of Stories, The Wishing Spell by Chris Colfer. Let's get started. The Land of Stories, The Wishing Spell is the first book out of the six books in total of the Land of Stories series. It was released on July 17, 2012, and it was published by Little Brown and Company in New York. In a land full of wonder and magic, it's no doubt that we awaken our child joy once again. That's exactly what you'll feel while reading the book The Land of Stories, The Wishing Spell by Chris Colfer. This book takes you on a thrilling adventure that creates a perfect combination of our modern day world with the enchanting realm of classic fairy tales. The Land of Stories tells the tale of a pair of twin siblings who live with their mother in the suburbs. After reading the book, what I particularly noticed was that the twins are positive role models where they encounter self-discovery in themselves. They found their true identity and what their fullest potential is. They also learn to be courageous in harsh situations as it's mandatory in order for them to survive and protect each other. The twins also encounter many other characters in the story, such as witches, wolves, goblins, and trolls alike. The author is able to convey the events in the story in an illustrative style that's very detailed. The reader is able to be imaginative and could portray the scenes clearly in their heads, such as she was standing on a dirt path in the middle of a thick forest. The trees were tall and dark, with bright green moss covering their trunks. The sun's rays shined through a thick mist. Birds squawked from high in the trees, and if she listened closely enough, she could hear a tiny stream in the distance. But personally, I had some issues in the sense that the plot and setting was transitioning a bit too quickly, that I felt like it was all going way too fast, and I just wanted to sit and think about it for a bit more sometimes rereading it as well so that I could just let it sink in my mind a little bit. But as soon as I got the pace of the story, of the plot, and its many twists and turns, it wasn't that big of a problem anymore. This book offers strong messages about how family members love and support one another despite their differences. There's a real heartfelt warmth to this book's characters and their situations. I highly recommend this book to those who are passionate about fairy tale stories from their childhood as they could recognize the backgrounds and traits of the characters in the story. Though this book can still be enjoyed by children and adults alike as it consists of twists and turns that gives a captivating feel to those who read it. And that wraps up my book review on The Land of Stories, The Wishing Spell by Chris Colfer. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone, my name is Regina from 12 Lines B. In this opportunity, I'm going to be talking about a young adult fiction novel called The Beginning of Everything by Robin Schneider. This novel was first published in 2013 and it encompasses a tale of a high school student who's trying to get on track after experiencing a big tragedy. Okay, so let's first talk about the plot. Of course, I won't be giving out much in order to avoid spoilers, so I'm going to be giving a very quick synopsis. Uh, and following that are my thoughts about the plot. So the story's main character is Ezra Faulkner, a high school student who has a very glorious reputation, uh, in which his pride and joy is being the king of tennis. And his life was perfect because of that, until one day, uh, he got involved in a car accident that shattered his knee. And because of that, he lost everything. He lost his friends, he lost his girlfriend, and he finds himself lost and sad. But all good things must come to an end, and so he must be prepared for another set of misfortunes once he involuntarily digs into the truth. What truth? Go find out and read the beginning of everything. <laughs> Jokes aside, the plot to me is really enjoyable. We get to see events unfold in the eyes of Ezra, yeah! and so we get to know firsthand about how he feels and how he perceives a certain situation. Well, I think that is interesting. Uh, what makes the story more entertaining is his character development. Reconnecting with Toby, meeting Cassidy and his new clubmates definitely opened his eyes about some things and new things. And while he is already quite smart, um, he becomes more decisive and open-minded as the story progresses. 
The plot is truly bittersweet and it's a media for witnessing growth and also a display for valuable life lessons such as the importance of supportive friends, forgiveness, and how living is not just about existing. Overall, the beginning of everything is a great recommendation. Although I have to say, there are some suggestive themes, well, with it being a, a, a young adult novel. So, children under 17 should kindly stay away. Adults should supervise kids whenever, whenever they read this around them. Hello, my name is Dixie Santo from 12th Science A, and today I will be presenting a book review of The Six of Crows by Leigh Bardugo. Let's get on to the video. The cornerstone of a great story tends to lean on a character's ability to move the narrative forward. With six contrasting individuals weaved into one intricate plot, that is the substantial feat author Leah Bardugo has managed to succeed in her bestseller, The Six of Crows. The fictional masterpiece takes you on a roller coaster of a journey, following intriguing casts and a compelling plot in a wondrous world of ability wielding people, the Grishaverse. Bardugo's take on her self built universe proves to be one of the greatest fabricated settings yet to be made. The Six of Crows is a novel full of intensity and grip that leaves readers wanting to know more. The book boasts an interesting style of storytelling, where each chapter excluding the prologue is told by a different member from the main six point of view. This masterfully portrays a sense of false comfort, where Bardugo tricks you into thinking you know what's going on from the influx of information always given. The characters themselves are rarely physically described. But there is argument to be made that giving the readers room to imagine what the cast looks like themselves is not necessarily a bad step to take. However, their personalities are made strikingly clear from dialogues and actions. The contrast in character between every cast member writes for entertaining, varying, and dynamic relationships, enchanting readers to continue, arguably, for interaction in between characters. Bardugo's iconic fictional world, the Grishaverse, features beautifully disparate settings such as Ketterdam, an almost modern steampunk city, with the otherworldly ice court. Though the nature of the Grishaverse can oftentimes be confusing due to complicated society and political roles, the environmental descriptions are captivating and successful enough to depict major plot points and set a clear tone for the story. This book was written to appeal to young adults. Though it is an ordinary read for bookworms, it may come off as overwhelming to new readers. For the world the plot is built upon, the Grishaverse, might look confusing and too complex without proper explanation from more of Bardugo's earlier works featuring the same universe. Amateur readers might also suffer from being engulfed with too many viewpoint changes in between every single chapter. Hi, my name is Narita Krisalatama from 12 Science B. Today, I'm going to review my favorite book called The Girl Who Could Fly. Have you ever seen a singing black cricket or an object that turns to stone when touched or even a flying girl? I don't think you have ever seen one of this and if you did, I'm sure you'll be amazed and terrified at the same time. I also felt the same way when I read the book The Girl Who Could Fly by Victoria Forrester. All things that you thought could not possibly exist will all be realized in this book. And only this book can realize your imagination. So, on an ordinary farm in lowland country, there lived a daughter named Piper McCloud who lived with her father and mother, Joe McCloud and Betty McCloud. Unlike normal babies who take a long time to learn how to crawl, one Thursday afternoon, Betty set about changing Piper's diaper on the kitchen table. And the moment she turned away, Piper rolled her body quickly as a flash off of the edge of the table and floated. The character of Piper, who is talkative and caring for her friends, is described by the author in a style that makes it easy for readers to understand it. So it is not too fancy and it is not too simple. During the novel, Piper became a more courageous child and her character development also made me even more interested in rereading this book a second time. 
So without going any further and spoiling this book, I will end by saying that this book has many twists and turns, some of which I never saw coming. I will highly recommend this book to anyone and I think readers who like the modern fantasy genre will find this book very interesting. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.